I'm Jerry Johnston, and over 20 years ago, we began an association for hunters called Texas Trophy Hunters. And finally, after all these years, we have our own television show. And today, you have the privilege of seeing our premier edition. On today's journal, you'll share an emotional nightmare with a frustrated young man named Matthew, who has wounded his first South Texas buck and is devastated by the possibility that it may be lost forever. So kick back, get your feet up, and get ready for a higher level of hunting television entertainment. Thousands of speckle-bellied geese and other feathered sidekicks spend the winter on the Hines Ranch in South Texas. What they don't know is there's a deer blind just over the hill out of sight. It's early morning and squeezed in that deer blind is a man and his grandson waiting for the boy's first South Texas buck. While the geese adjust for the morning's dim light, at the same time, a deer comes within shooting distance of the blind. The geese can't hear that boy's heart pounding. They don't hear the gun's safety click off or granddad's reassuring whisper. But believe me, they do here. Somewhere over the hill, past the curtain of confusion that fills the air, that dream buck fell from the youngster's bullet, then rose again to disappear into the brush, the way startled geese disappear into the sky. When a wounded deer walks into that brush, he might as well walk off the face of the earth. Billy Patterson and his grandson Matthew have come too far to let a big South Texas buck get lost in this brush. That's why they called in what some consider to be the best deer tracking team in the world, Roy Hines and his blue cow dog. It's just a big old management buck. I don't even know which one they killed. Billy picked him. Well, he was sitting there talking to that dog. Please find my deer. Please find my deer. We backed off, left everything alone. Called little Roy, asked him to bring the dog. We wanted that buck. This is the scene of the crime. This might happen pretty fast now. Every time I drive to a new site, the, deer, the hunter's gonna tell me the deer went to the right or to the left. And I have learned to completely ignore that. Depend on the dogs to find the track because when the hunter left and called me, the deer might have crossed back across the road. And you just can't, uh, you can't depend on that at all. You got to believe your dog and just, just tune him out. I haven't seen one drop of blood yet. Sick him, Jethro. <laughs> The deer's alive. The dog's barking, so we know right now the deer's alive. Roy Hines' deer dogs are determined and fearless. They dive headfirst into the thickest brush. Roy and his dad have fine-tuned and trained these dogs to extreme measures. Their barks are like a language known only to Roy. The dogs know not to bark at a dead deer. And because of that, Roy will have to find the canine cop with a tracking device. It's a jungle of stickers, rocks, and cactus. When you take your dogs out there to, to catch the deer, the main thing in the back of your mind is to trust the dogs, whatever they're telling you. You've got to be quiet and slip in there. Back at the pickup, little Matthew and his granddaddy Billy can only listen to the distant thrashing in the thick brush. Everyone's betting on the dog. Yo, come on, here's a deer. There's a shot, a little bit far back, maybe a tad low. Nice buck. Boy, I'd be real happy. By the deer shot in the belly, and with not a real big gun, I don't know if it made an exit wound or not. I don't know if that's the exit wound or, let me see. Anyway, the deer didn't bleed. I never found any blood. There was bound to have been some, and the dogs couldn't have smelled it, but, but uh, 
it would have been real hard for a, a guy to trail him because you wouldn't known if he was on the right deer or not without the blood. Did y'all find a deer out here? Yeah, there's one laying here. Is this is this coming in and going out? Yes. Which side do you head to you? We could have wandered around out there for days and never found that deer. After all that work they do, all they want is a pat on the head, really. Over the years, Roy has turned hunting tragedies into uh, celebrations. Uh, people who just knew their animal was gone. They bring these dogs out, find them, and just turn a tragedy into an experience that a person wouldn't forget the rest of their life. Found some animals that otherwise would never have been recovered. Roy Hines Sr., known to locals as Big Roy, has heard the ordeal from miles away. He knows that all the years of working deer dogs and passing on his talent to little Roy is all okay. worth it in times Here like these. To him, it's not just another deer here, fight, dog. it's an emotional victory. It's still not totally explained how the Heinz deer dogs can perform so well in such an environment. But come hunting season, the phone will ring and Roy will take off for some distant hunting camp and deliver nothing less than a miracle in the brush. I would have hated to have to gone back and uh, never known what happened to that deer the dog gave that boy that deer. We hope to see you next week for another exciting edition of the Journal of the Texas Trophy Hunters. See you then. <laughs>